Meanwhile, on behalf of Canada, Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird issued the following statement today. Canada is deeply disturbed by today's news that Russian vehicles have illegally entered Ukraine for the purported purpose of delivering humanitarian aid. This action is not only a clear violation of Ukrainian sovereignty, but also a breach of agreements reached between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Once again, Russia has flouted its international obligations and demonstrated its contempt for Ukraine's sovereignty. Joining me now, Ted Opitz is here. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, Doug. You in agreement with uh, both the, the Rear Admiral from the U.S. and John Baird? A absolutely. You know, Russia is a bad actor. Um, who? This is a violation of Ukraine's sovereign territory. They have crossed the border without permission, and and that's a, that's an invasive, provocative action in in vehicles that were not entirely clear to go the the international red cross is not uh, with them they've kind of disavowed it they say well, well we don't have anything to do with this the red cross has well because the red cross they don't want to be responsible no they can't be responsible yeah. because they need assurances from both sides that they'll be able to to escort them safely but there's still shooting going on uh, in be between the uh, the two groups and of course you know uh, i hasten to add ukraine tried to bring aid in to those areas in the past and that without was blocked and denied by uh, Putin's uh, provocateurs. All right. So, in fact, Ukraine's president, uh, Poroshenko, has gone so far as to accuse Russia of a flagrant violation of international law. It's interesting that those trucks sat for so long waiting for an inspection, and then I guess Putin just decided, ah, I'm going in. Well, I'm absolutely suspect about those trucks to begin with. I mean, they were all newly painted white. I, I presume to make them look like UN-type trucks. Uh, uh, so that's suspect to me in the first place. Most of those trucks were empty when they were, were inspected. So what are you trying to bring in and what are you trying to take out? Uh, there's, there's a lot of questions around those trucks and who the drivers are. They, they look uh, fairly military in their bearing to me. So. Well, I, I wonder, you're right, uh, it was a week or so ago that we started to see some video of some of those trucks and they would be half empty or three quarters empty. And you wondered what used to be in them before. Either that or it was a remarkable illustration of Russian inefficiency uh, in terms of moving goods, but probably the former, uh, something had been offloaded from the truck before they let people take a look at them. So if whatever that might have been was already taken off, I wonder why the, this move now. Russia can't be that anxious to bring humanitarian aid. Well, look, you know, Putin has, uh, has staked a lot in this. You know, the, you know, he can deny all he wants, but the world knows. Russia is, is a provocateur here. Russia has supplied weapons. Let me remind you of MH17. You know, as, as Minister Baird had said previously, Vladimir Putin may not have pulled the trigger, but he loaded the gun, and he gave those uh, those provocateurs. Uh, a You're talking weapon. about the Malaysian airliner that was absolutely down. Uh, yeah. the Malaysian airliner. 298 people shot down, yeah. um, and he he has responsibility for this, as do the uh, the mercenaries in eastern Ukraine. Well, um, this it, it seems that the, that Ukraine is gaining some victory militarily, uh, slowly, but they're gaining. Do you think? Does it look that way to you? Yes, uh, the Ukrainian army has come a long, long way. They they are having uh, a great success, and that's what is probably making Vladimir Putin very, very nervous because they are winning, and they are pushing these provocateurs back. Um, President Poroshenko and and his government have made uh, overtures to to potentially uh, have uh, amnesties and to, to have safe corridors to let them get out and back into Russia, where they came from uh, to begin with. And um, there has been no luck on that side. So Putin has a lot at stake here, and I think he's getting nervous and scared that the Ukrainian army has gained the upper hand. And, and they, they're now better equipped. Canada has given them $5 million of non-lethal aid, uh, things that are hugely important. Helmets, thousands of helmets, flak jackets, the what commonly referred to as a bulletproof vest. Right. Uh, tents, uh, which are very important because the troops have to sleep some of these four-man recce tents. We've give, given them in huge numbers. I used to use those. Uh, sleeping bags, and most importantly, uh, very sophisticated uh, first aid kits, soldier kits, and uh, kits for uh, uh, for medics in the field that are, that are highly sophisticated. You can almost perform a small operation. All right, uh, and so as long as it remains the type of engagement that it is, perhaps slowly but surely Ukraine can win. If, on the other hand, Putin decides to just bring in the Russian military, well, then it's over. No, it's not going to be over. I mean, he, he may do that, and then, the, then there will be no more denials on their part. I mean, he... Uh, what I mean is yeah. it's a powerful country. Country. It's a powerful country, but, you know, motivation, morale, desire is a very powerful motivator, too. The Ukrainian military and its people have risen up. The Maidan has started something. The people said no. They had enough. 
and they got rid of Yanukovych and, and, uh, and corrupt uh, individuals like him. Uh, they still have a lot of cleaning up to do, they have a lot of work to do on corruption, they have a lot of reforms to make, but the people have turned the corner and they've had enough. And they've elected overwhelmingly a president who is, uh, by all indications, doing his job, fighting for his country, and, and rallying his citizens and his military. And morale is a, is a massive force multiplier in a military engagement. And I think Vladimir Putin is underestimating that. I want to ask you a question from another direction. Uh, the Prime Minister currently is on his, I think, ninth annual trip to mm -hmm. the North. Um, we have concerns now which country really controls the North. Could we get into a more unpleasant uh, engagement with Russia in that regard? Um, you know, anything's possible, uh, but not from our end. I mean, we, we have our Arctic. We know what our territories and our boundaries are. Those other issues are being discussed by scientists. and at He the, doesn't necessarily agree. Who's that? R uh, Putin. Well, you know, this is our, I don't care if he agrees. This is, this is our nation. This is our yeah. country. Our prime minister is in the north, uh, um, you know, uh, on, on a mission to visit uh, the people of the north and, and uh, across, uh, across the entire region. And uh, the North is Canada. So the Arctic, this is our Arctic uh, territory, and uh, this is what uh, we're doing to, to lay claim to it, and this is what we do. The Prime Minister goes on an annual visit up there to, to demonstrate Canada's sovereignty over that region. So Santa Claus is Canadian? Absolutely. All right. And thanks. his passport. <laughs> thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Good to have you.